So he appears as Lord Chaitanya. He expands himself. Or no, he's not expansion. He's, he's, this, an original form of Krishna is Lord Chaitanya. And he appears in this form, in the Kali Yuga, to taste this Mahabhava mood of conjugal love, uh, devotional service in the mood and style of Srimati Radharani. So this is why the teachings of Lord Chaitanya are so high. And this is why the mood of Lord Chaitanya is so confidential. Almost nobody understands it. Uh, various devotees around India, they have all kinds of uh, rationalizations and, and wrong understandings of who Lord Chaitanya is. Uh, but, you know, to get the real story, you have to read Chaitanya Charitamrita. And in there you will find that Lord Chaitanya is Krishna in the mood of Radha. Uh, it says, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahayanya. He is Radha and Krishna combined. He is Krishna on the inside, but Radha on the outside. That's why he has the golden color. That's the color of Radharani. So, uh, can you fix that fire, please? So, we follow Lord Chaitanya. Uh, not that we try to imitate Lord Chaitanya but we follow his instructions because he is showing us how to please Krishna the most. He's showing us how to approach Krishna and serve him in the mood of Srimati Radharani, in the style and with the emotions of Srimati Radharani. This is very rare, very special. Yeah, that's better. I'm trying to stay warm here. It's like freezing. <laughs> um, we want to approach Krishna in this same mood because this is what pleases Krishna the most. See? There's something which is called um, uh, Prema Vilas. No, not Prema Vilas. Um, what's that name of that book by Jagadananda? Prem Vivarta. Yeah. Prem Vivarta. Vivarta means the opposite. You see? There's a kind of love which is called counter love, which appears to be the opposite of love because it's, it's very crooked and there's all kinds of bickering and, and competition and uh, intrigue. and it's very, it's very strange. It's very hard for us to understand because we're simple creatures, you know? And, uh, but Krishna is the connoisseur of love. It says his name is Rasaraj. Rasaraj means the king of rasa, the king of different emotional tastes. Uh, he is like a great artist of love who relishes the most subtle and profound tastes of love. Uh, he's expert in all different flavors of love. That's all Krishna does. That's, that's what he does. That's, that's his purpose of living, of existence, is to relish this wonderful love of devotional service of his devotees. So Krishna, his business is only in relishing different, wonderful, amazing, beautiful relationships of love. And Radharani's only business is coming up with newer and newer and more exciting and more tasty variations of this loving propensity of Krishna, you see. So this is what's going on at Radha Kund. This is why all the great devotees lived there, spent some time there, did their sadhana there. Uh, uh, all the great devotees in our line have spent some time there. I spent, one time I spent a month there while I was in Vrindavan. I got bored with the temple. <laughs> and uh, I, I just went, went on a day trip, actually, to, to Radha Kun. And I didn't come back for a month. <laughs> I found myself staying there in an ashram with, with um, a Krishna Das Babaji, Prabhupada's godbrother, Krishna Das. And... Uh, 
and they were so nicely situated in Raganuga Bhakti. It was the first time I had ever seen this kind of worship. It was ecstatic, and it was really far out, you know. So I was chanting 64 rounds and just, you know, living like a Babaji, just... I think they gave... Did they give me a room, or was I sleeping outside? No, they, I think they gave me a room somewhere, just a little very, very simple room. I was just sleeping on the, on the floor on a blanket, you know. And uh, the weather was nice, so there was no problem with that. And going to the kunda every day, bathing two or three times in Radha Kund, and that's just that was just so ecstatic. I mean, you can't imagine. So uh, these experiences are, you know, what helps to mature devotional service because we get exposed to the advanced practitioners. Um, you know, like right now. You know, it, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to act uh, in, uh, you know, a real Raganuga mood because um, you know, the devotees who are associating with me here, they're in the beginning stages or the, the sadhana bhakti stage uh, where they have to follow regulative principles. So for me to get, you know, too far out wouldn't be good for them. So uh, anyway, uh, but if you go someplace where the majority of the devotees are in Raganuga mood, then you know the, you're the only one who's like in in uh, Vaidhi Bhakti. That really turns your head around. It's like, whoa, wait a minute, what? <laughs> like when they, you know, when we offer food, we we make a nice little plate and we take it and just set it in front of the deities and then bow down and say prayers and stuff like that. But in this ashram, they were taking the chapatis and just touching it directly to Krishna's mouth, the deity of Krishna. Like, here, Krishna, eat. You know, it's a completely different mood. There's no awe and reverence whatsoever. Krishna is everybody's best friend. Huh? So just try to understand these different moods. Different moods are there because different devotees have different uh, necessities or tastes. Uh, and the devotee, the taste uh, for one devotee will not work, will not nourish or help the other devotees. They each have to have an environment, uh, practice, uh, philosophy, that allows them to experience the taste that they need, the taste, the mood that they relish with Krishna. So for those who are in conjugal love, then uh, the mood at Radha Kun is just the most perfect, most, most ad advanced, most blissful place you know, for them to practice their devotional service. There's no, really no comparison to it. The only problem is in recent times there's been too much tourism there. It kind of dilutes the mood, you know. It's really a place that should be confidential. It shouldn't only, it only should have really, really fixed up devotees there. So uh, all the really serious devotees have moved out of Radhakund now and they're, they're like way up in the woods at Varshana or places like that. You know, it's... Uh, it's too bad what's happened. So it's, it's only temporary, you know. Pretty soon that'll be over. And everything will go back to normal. <laughs> so uh, Radha Kund, yeah, every devotee, if you get a chance in your life, you should visit Radha Kund. Yeah. When we're in India, we're definitely going to take a, a trip up to Vrindavan and uh, we'll see all these places. You know, sometime in the off-season. Not Kartik or not... Not Janmashtami or, you know, sometime in the, in the off season. Well, because we're going to be getting in, into India just about Kartik, for Kartik time. Yeah. So a lot of the temple towns get overwhelmed during Kartik, the, the Krishna temple towns anyway. Um, so we have to find some nice quiet place. Anyway, I don't know what more I could say about... Um, 
Radha Kund and what goes on there. Oh, yeah, he mentions Ashtakaliya Lila. Uh, Ashtakaliya means eight divisions or eight periods. So Krishna's pastimes every day, he has a regular daily schedule. His pastimes are divided up into eight periods of the day. And uh, they go around in a, a daily cycle. Krishna's every day is pretty much the same. He wakes up very early in the morning, like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And when he wakes up, he's with Radharani out in the forest. And then they go through some very, very intense pastimes of separation. And they race back to their 